to another episode of First Impressions. Today I'm looking at XCOM 2. I'm going to talk about what you do in the game, go through the gameplay, the good points, the bad points, and give you my overall first impressions. So, what's the aim of XCOM 2? Well, XCOM 2 takes place after the events of the previous game, which was entitled XCOM Enemy Unknown. So, in the first game, he led soldiers and ran the XCOM project. Now XCOM is a military organisation that you were in charge of. And the purpose in the first game was to counter the alien invasion which began to plague the Earth. In XCOM 2, the game takes place 20 years after the events of the first game and opens up with the news that you actually lost the initial war to defeat the aliens. Now, you lead XCOM as a resistance force against the aliens who are referred to in the game as Advent. The aliens actually occupy Earth, and the aim of the game is actually to break their hold and free Earth. In XCOM 2, there's actually three areas of gameplay. The first part is managing the mobile base, which is called the Avenger. The Avenger is a repurposed alien spacecraft which you use as your main base of operations. In the Avenger, you have to clear debris, which will allow you to expand your facilities and build further rooms. Each new facility that you build will vary in its purpose. Some of them are additional workshops and laboratories, some of them are rooms which help facilitate combat, as well as develop new equipment and weapons that you can use in battle. In the Avenger, you can carry out various research projects, such as investigating and reverse engineering alien equipment that you recover from battles. You can also carry out autopsies on the different enemy types that you kill. When you complete these investigations and autopsies, it allows you to then develop new equipment and research new ways to help combat the enemies in the game. The same goes for building new facilities in the Avenger, such as developing the Gorilla Ops Room. This room allows you to invest in useful perks to improve the odds in battle, such as increasing the squad size and general skills to improve their survivability. You're able to build other facilities and rooms in the game. These all serve various functions. Some of them allow you to develop further technologies. Some of them allow you to learn new skills as well. An important point to remember in XCOM is that whenever you do any research or construction, is that it takes time. Before you commit to any new development, it will tell you how many in-game days it will take to complete a project. Some of them can be completed in two or three days, while others can take much longer, such as 20 to 30 days. This also applies when autopsies are carried out, whenever weapons and equipment is developed, and whenever debris is cleared to allow you to build new rooms. And there are points in the game where you're able to either reduce the time of construction or the research and development of new equipment and weapons. The second part of XCOM 2's gameplay is the actual combat. Combat itself is turn-based and tactical. Typically you take actions such as moving and attacking with your soldiers first, which is then followed by the alien's turn to counter-attack. A lot of missions actually start with your soldiers entering the area fully concealed. When you're concealed, the enemy is unaware of your presence, which will allow you to set up ambushes and complete objectives. As soon as you actually attack, or are discovered by the enemy on their patrols, the concealment period ends, and then a full-scale battle will take place. The missions in XCOM 2 are quite varied. Some of the missions start where the aliens know that you're already in the area, and they come prepared for a full-scale battle. Some of the missions require you to complete the objectives in a set number of turns, now this forces you to be a bit more adventurous and risky with your gameplay and it ups the tension of each battle. This can be things such as destroying cache shades of data before the aliens remove it from the battlefield or rescuing VIPs. And some missions involve you actually rescuing and saving civilians from alien attacks. The soldiers you have in XCOM 2 usually start as rookies with no specialist skills or training. When they first kill an enemy and survive a mission, they will level up and become an expert in a particular battlefield role. They can learn new skills each time they level up which further boosts that role and use in the game. The soldier types you get in XCOM 2 are quite varied. So you've got the Ranger class who is a specialist in close combat using shotguns and swords and they're good at closing the distance and dealing critical damage to enemies and catching them off guard. There's a specialist class which uses a mobile drone and they can aid in either recovery of soldiers, boosting their defence hack enemy installations and technology, as well as develop skills which actually do remote damage to enemies and robotics. There's a sharpshooter. The sharpshooter is basically a sniper and they can do damage from long range as well as take out enemies that are closing on them using their pistols. There's a grenadier class. 
These guys are basically designed to provide heavy firepower using cannons and grenade launchers to deal area effect damage and they can damage either multiple enemies, they can destroy the cover used by enemies and also shred armour on armoured foes such as mechs and turrets. Later in the game you can develop a cyber soldier called a Psy Operatives and they use psychic abilities which can do things such as control enemies for a set number of turns. Your soldiers in XCOM do start out with a set number of health points which does increase as they level up and get better armour. Now when your soldiers are injured in battle you can recover their health points and at the end of the mission, depending on the severity of the health points they've lost, regardless of how much you've recovered, they'll either be lightly wounded or gravely wounded. Whenever a soldier's wounded, they'll take a set number of in-game days to recover and they're unavailable for future missions until they're fully recovered from their wounds. This means you have to manage a balanced roster of different soldier classes so that you're not left with complete rookies when you lose a soldier in battle or others are unavailable, as this can mean later missions can be mostly unwinnable if you have underdeveloped soldiers. In combat, soldiers have to use cover to reduce the likelihood of being shot and the damage they do receive when being shot. They also have to manage the reloading of their weapons, and if they have the right items they have to heal comrades as well as obviously take out the enemy forces. One of the most important things you need to bear in mind for XCOM 2 is that if your soldier dies, they're dead forever. So if you fully level up a soldier in an expert role and they die, they're gone. And if you have no other soldier in that same role or they're not as developed as them, it's going to make your future missions very difficult. You need to also bear in mind that your opponent is also able to fight and organise in the same way you do. So they can use cover, they can do area attacks, set ambushes and they'll generally try the hardest to wipe out your resistance movement. The third and final part of XCOM 2's gameplay is building the resistance movement in the world. So you do this by flying to different parts of the globe and accepting and responding to different missions. Some of these missions are things I've mentioned already such as rescuing VIPs and saving civilians from alien executions. But you can also raid supplies and disrupt alien bases and also slow down their progress. You don't need to undertake all the missions, however some of them, if ignored, will bring about negative consequences temporarily such as either reduced income or they can lead to dark events such as further civilian executions or at some point in the game there may be a UFO that begins to hunt your Avenger and if you're shot down that will trigger a large scale battle until you can escape. The key thing with XCOM 2 is that you need to bear in mind that you're going to be doing a lot of management. You need to consider what research and facilities to develop as everything takes time. You need to have enough soldiers and enough varied classes so you're not short of skilled fighters. You need to manage income and expenditure as all equipment and facilities require money to build and any facilities that you develop then require continuous money to allow them to run all the time. Generally speaking, the more resistance cells that you contact, the more money you have, but to do that you need to carefully manage time and missions to be successful. I really like the graphics in XCOM 2. Uh, the colour scheme is quite bright and colourful and there's a lot of detail in the character models and the environmental effects such as explosions, the shattering of glass, damage to buildings, destruction of cover. The maps are procedurally generated so this creates a randomness and different layouts to all the missions. There are some instances where sometimes the models will click through terrain when they're crouched or firing and there's the odd occasion where textures do disappear from the models temporarily when they're moving but instances of that are quite rare. I really enjoyed the music and sound in XCOM 2. The musical score is a military-esque in theme and does heighten the emotions, especially when you're in battle. The sound effects are quite clear, so weapons fire, environmental effects such as the shattering of glass, explosions, even things such as when your soldiers climb up and down pipes and ladders or open doors, they all sound quite convincing and clear. The voice acting in XCOM 2's cutscenes is really good, and I also enjoy the dialogue of your soldiers each time they take an action. There's different options for male and female characters and also there's dialogue in different languages so you can choose what language your soldiers speak and it does create a good idea that you've got a multinational resistance force. The alien forces have voiced quite well, especially the advent soldiers. In particular they've got a language which is harsh and sharp and it makes the idea of them being fascist dictators more convincing when you hear it spoken in the battlefield. So to discuss the good points of XCOM 2, there's a lot of varied missions, 
and the map layouts are generated procedurally which creates a randomness to the map so they don't all look the same. The combat's rewarding and there's a good story that engages you as a player. There's a lot of varied enemy types for you to fight against. One of the things that impresses me most with XCOM 2 is the options for customising your soldiers. So you can change not only their language but also their physical appearance, hairstyle, skin tone, eye colour. You can also change the appearance of armour and also the colour scheme of armour the colour scheme of weapons, there's even different decals for the weapons, so you've got different prints like camouflage, some of them are just silly looking just for a bit of humour, and you can make your character look quite bold and impressive. Also, the game does a good job of making you care for your soldiers, especially with the permadeath situation. If you've spent hours developing a set of soldiers and one of them dies, you know, you really are going to feel the hurt there. And there's three DLC packs available, one of them just gives you some more customization options for your soldiers, whilst the other two expand the story further. Now to discuss the bad points of XCOM 2. So although the combat on the whole is very solid, there are times where your soldier will be stood in front of an enemy and they'll attack and they'll miss at point blank range. Now this is because the game calculates hit and dodge rates of each soldier and, en and enemy that you fight. It can be a bit annoying though, especially when the enemy is tough. One wrong move in the game can lead to your soldiers being wiped out, so you can either have a favourite soldier killed or even the whole squad. This can be quite frustrating, especially in some missions can take upwards of an hour. So I would recommend saving regularly before and after each mission and not relying on the game's auto save feature too much. There are some graphical glitches in places, which I mentioned earlier, such as textures disappearing. And sometimes the frame rate drops, so when your missions are loading and your objectives are being described, the soldiers are in what's called a sky range. It's a bit like a helicopter and sometimes it seems to drop in the frame rate at that point, but thankfully in combat, every frame rate does seem to be quite stable. The load times of the game are very long, so when you load up a game you can be waiting three to four minutes for the game to actually load up. So overall I describe XCOM 2 as this well developed strategy game that has a long campaign, unpredictable missions, a desperate setting and strong soldier and alien designs. It's occasionally let down by the odd graphical glitch and the occasional frustrations in combat and the really long load times. But if you're looking for a casual game to dip in and out of, then this is not for you. But if you want a long campaign, challenging combat and a story that you can sink your teeth into, a game that you'll generally get invested into quite easily, then I would definitely recommend XCOM 2. Well, this is the end of this episode of First Impressions. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you subscribe to my channel, that will be sure you never miss another video. But once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.